students good morning today we will learn about electromagnetic waves and electromagnetic spectrum okay before starting the session let us start our session with an question session children what is the first question let us look at it do all the atoms have the same subatomic particles answer it children do all the atoms have the same subatomic particles yes of course till now we studied that atom is having all the three subatomic particles what are those protons neutrons and electrons am i right of course if all the atoms are having the same subatomic particles why is an atom of one element is different from atom of other elements children just think about it first atom of one element is different from atom of another element see suppose for example hydrogen is different from oxygen means the element of hydrogen properties is different from oxygen right and how are the electrons distributed in the space of an atom now we have to understand we know a one thing that electrons are revolving around the nucleus inside the atom but we don't know how the electrons are distributed in the space of an atom right so to answer the above questions we need to understand the nature of the colored flame and their characteristics maybe you are worrying about it why what is the use of learning the nature of the colored flames while we are discussing about the electrons protons and the neutrons maybe you are thinking right so if you want to see an object what you require children the light should be focused on the object am i right of course if we want to see a small tiny particle of an atom that is an electron where it is exactly around the nucleus that around the nucleus okay we have to find out such an electron in the sense we have to focus some of the light on it okay whenever the light has been focused on a small small tiny particle called an electron then what happens of course with that wavelength of the light the electron tries to vibrate by getting the energy from the light right whenever the electron starts vibrating what is going to happen it is going to produce some of the different flame structures let us see let us get into the topic we are going to say about spectrum what do you mean by spectrum children the spectrum is a combination of different colors spectrum is a combination of different colors so let's discuss about the wave nature of the light first of all okay let's come to the point a vibrating electric charge creates a change in the electric field what does it mean a vibrating electric charge whenever light falls on the atom and then the electrons which are revolving around the nucleus starts vibrating okay so whenever it starts vibrating it used to create an electric field why it used to create electric field children exactly because it is electron it is having some charge right what is that charge negative charge it has so that's what with that charge it used to create a field around it so that is the that is the thing that it is going to have it is going to produce electric field now coming to that the change in the electric field creates the change in the magnetic field of course electric field whenever the, if it is having the negative charge it used to it, uh, it tries to attract the positive charges right so thereby it is having the two charges that is negative as well as positive so negative attract the positive positive attract the negative this means this attraction we exactly see in the property of magnetism right so that is how the electric field used to create there is a change in the magnetic field too so this process continues with both created fields being perpendicular to each other and right angle the direction of propagation of the wave means here how the wave is going to be propagated 
the produced electric and magnetic field will be all in three dimensional motion see children if you observe all the three dimensions all the three dimensions if you observe this you can understand so suppose this is the wave this is the wave propagation this is the wave propagation then this is the produced of electric field and this is the production of magnetic field means all the three one are perpendicular to the other one are perpendicular to the other all the three all the three fields are perpendicular to all the three fields are perpendicular to each other in a three dimensional motion am i so clear children i will demonstrate that three dimensional motion with a picture later okay children let's start the next one what are the characteristics of the electromagnetic waves what are the characteristics so we should know about the characteristics of the electromagnetic waves so it depends on any wave any wave is dependent on a particular equation that c is equals to nu lambda what is that c is equals to nu lambda okay where c is the speed of the light and lambda is its wavelength in meters it is going to give and nu is the frequency so that means any wave depends on the three characteristics that speed and wavelength and its frequency okay so there is a small relation between this wave wavelength speed and frequency that this is c is equals to nu lambda c is equals to nu lambda okay children i hope you understood and here the speed of the light in the vacuum has been given c is equals to 2.9979458 that is what approximately of 3 we can say so 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second that is what the speed of the light we are going to consider in vacuum am i so clear to you children right so that's what these wave properties has been mathematically related as c is equals to nu lambda okay let us look at how what is this wavelength okay and what is this uh, frequency and what what is the speed how are we going to calculate let us check out coming to the wave characteristics what are the wave characteristics now let's see the first thing is that wavelength coming to this wavelength this is it's symbolically represented with the symbol called lambda what is that symbolic representation of this is lambda okay that means wavelength is the distance between identical points on the successive waves or peaks or troughs like suppose this is the wave okay let us see suppose this is our wave assume that this is our wave okay now there are some of the crests which are at the top most point okay these are called crests and the down parts these are considered as troughs okay let us see with the demonstration so clearly in the next slides let us see the next point is that frequency frequency is being represented with nu that is what the number of waves that pass a particular point in one second how it will be number of waves that means whenever a wave has been propagated from a, from one of the source suppose this is the source okay let us try to the wave is coming from here no number of waves i have taken one second so it has been produced so here from here onwards see one then two then three then half so three and half waves has been produced this is my frequency means in one second how many number of waves has been passed to a, through a 
particular point that means through this particular point how many number of waves has been produced that is what will be considered as frequency now coming to the amplitude children the vertical distance from the midline of the waves to the top of the peak or the bottom of the trough means suppose we have a wave like this okay here i have to taken with the two different amplitude waves see here now this is one of the wave okay this is first wave let us take then this is the second wave let us take this is the second wave now this is my amplitude and here this is my amplitude that means from the highest peak to the that means from the midline to the highest peak or else from the midline to the down part down trough part down trough part so from the midline to the down trough part this is what considered as amplitude let me demonstrate this exactly the frequency and the amplitude and the wavelength there is a relation between all these children there is a small relation between all these things okay let us see with a the diagram then you can understand very clearly i hope okay let's see this see here children you just try to observe now very carefully you, you will get a clear idea about it okay now let's see what is going to happen wavelength wavelength is the distance between the peaks i said right now here there are three different waves i have taken children there is a wave a and there is wave b and there is wave c and this wave has been produced see whenever we are going to say it is a complete wave that means however it has been started see from here onwards it started <clears throat> again it should reach the same position again it should reach the same position until here until here are you observing the pointer what i am showing you or else we'll do one thing see this part yes until here this is a complete wave this is a complete wave now count down how many waves are over here one then two from here onwards one more right so this is two and then from here onwards again this is three and from here onwards once again this is four maybe somebody are thinking ma'am it is not like in that way maybe like this this is a wave of course see here you observe very carefully children here from where it has been started exactly from where it has been started from the middle line onwards to the top it is moving and coming down and reach the middle line again means the second wave starts starts over here it starts over here means what the same phase particle has been come the same phase same phase in the sense what the uh, the particle is in which position the particle is in which position here it is on the on the top of the midline in the upward direction of course here after completion of the down part it started again from the topmost particle so in this way in this way it will be completed if you observe this this is also the same right okay from here onwards from here onwards it has reached the down part okay and then down part has been completed and it has been reached the topmost part if this topmost ha part has been added over here you can observe this as a complete wave okay wave means it should be like this only we, we need not need not uh, say like that we have to observe from which position it has been started again where its position restarted where its position restarted then that will be considered as a wave so how many number of waves over here children how many number of waves over here here there are four waves here okay i uh, don't count this because i have just drawn it right okay let me take out this okay now how many number of waves are there over here children 1 2 3 and 4 there are four waves now coming over here how many number of waves now 1 okay until here 2 until here 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 then 7 and then 8 means here there are four number of waves okay and here there are eight number of waves now if you count it 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन वाई एम आई काउंटिंग द टॉप मोस्ट पॉइंट बिकॉज इट स्टार्टेड विद द टॉप मोस्ट पॉइंट दैट्स वेल टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन दैट इज वर सिक्सटीन टोटल सिक्सटीन वेव्स आर देयर क्लियर now suppose the wave has been started from here then the wave ends like this understood children now again it starts from here right so that is a complete wave we can say am i so clear children i hope so you are understood now there are so many number of waves it has been produced over here number of waves per second is considered as frequency children the number of waves produced in one second are called frequency that means here for for my wave a the frequency is 4 okay four waves now for b eight waves and for c 16 clear children now coming to the wavelength wavelength in, in the sense wavelength is the distance between the two consecutive crests or troughs means let me clear all these okay <clears throat> now let us see the wavelength now see the wavelength this is a crest and this is a trough here the distance between the two consecutive crests or the distance between the two consecutive troughs this is also will be considered as wavelength children this is also considered as wavelength means either this or this these two distances and these two lengths will be same these two distances or these two lengths will be same of course okay so now observe the wavelength over here the wavelength of the wave a is lambda a and then the wavelength of wave b is lambda b and then the wavelength of c is lambda c if you observe the wavelength so clearly there is a relation lambda a is a is quite bigger and lambda b is bit smaller and lambda c is still more smaller length am i right and these are been denoted as means here it seems to be see here it seems to be half of it am i right see half of the wave has been completed here a full wave has been completed that means this is the complete wave and this is the half of the wave that means it has been doubled right the wavelength has been doubled that means here one wave and two waves while we are completing one wave over here we can complete the wavelength of two waves that's what lambda a is in terms represented as 2 lambda b now in this lambda b again it is half that's what lambda a is equals to four times of it if you observe this line so clearly you you will get it see here total four waves 1 2 3 4 waves until here it is four waves did you understand so here are the four waves this is how the wavelengths are been related from a b c so lambda a is the wavelength and lambda b is also wavelength lambda c is also wavelength here i am comparing the three waves right that's what maybe i am going to get the relation as lambda a is equals to 2 lambda b is equals to 4 lambda c here you need not worry about the relation between all these three waves children only thing is that you have to understand what is exactly a wavelength wavelength is nothing but the distance between peaks it has been given actual statement is that what distance between two consecutive you should not take the point point over here first and then the there is point here over next then okay this way this is called wavelength you should not do like that two consecutive crests or two consecutive troughs either two consecutive crests or the two consecutive troughs the distance is considered as wavelength means only until here you have to calculate either this one or either this one or either this one like that you have to consider this is what the wavelength now coming to the number of frequency frequency is equals to cycles cycles in the sense not by cycles children it is just waves cycles okay waves waves in terms called as cycles okay the waves produced per a second how many number of waves has been produced over here four waves here frequency of a is 4 and frequency of b is what 8 right so half into 8 in the sense of course it will be four them 
okay now 1 4 this is what 16 right so 1 4th of vc vc is 16 now so 1 4th into 16 how much it will be 4 that's what here it has been given a relation that means va is equals to va is 4 okay is equals to now 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 8. 1 by 2 into 8 gives us the result as 4 only, right? Again, here, here if you observe 1 by 4 into 16. Again, this also gives the relation as, of course, 1 by 4 into 16, that is 4 itself. So, these frequencies has been related in this way. I hope so you all understood uh, about wavelength and the frequency. Now, let us get into the next point that amplitude. I, uh, what is the uh, definition of the amplitude? So, amplitude is the peak that means the highest. The, here we can say in, in terms of a sound wave, we can say this is the maximum disturbance created. It is the maximum disturbance created. That means the distance from the down that is what the middle line to the highest peak. Okay, to the highest peak, the distance from the middle line to the highest of the peak. Okay, this is what considered as amplitude and even this is also considered as amplitude and this is also considered as amplitude. This is what amplitude, that means the highest peak or the, that is what considered as the highest energy we can say in the wave, it is having the highest energy. Okay, so in this wave, this is the amplitude and in this wave, this is the amplitude. And in this wave, this is the amplitude like that. Okay. I hope you understood about even the amplitude too. Okay. Like, can I continue the next slide, children? Can I continue the next slide? Before going to the next slide, let me complete this statements of the wavelength, frequency and amplitude. Wavelength is distance between the two con consecutive troughs or crests. Okay. And then frequency in the sense number of waves produced per a second. And then coming to the amplitude, this is the highest, the distance between the midline and the highest peak is considered as amplitude. Okay, children, let's move on. Coming to the nature of the light means why we have to understand the nature of the light, children. If we understand the nature of the light, then only we can understand the electromagnetic spectrum. So, the electromagnetic spectrum includes many different types of radiation. Many means different. Okay. Different types of radiations. Let us see what are the radiations in that. In that total electromagnetic spectrum, we have, we can see only the visible light. Only a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is visible light. Okay. Only a small part we can see. This is visible light accounts over only a small part of the spectrum. Other familiar forms includes radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, etc. So, these are all the things are also there in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, let's observe what is going to happen. All the forms of light travels in wave structures only. And let me clear you one more statement that why these are being considered as electromagnetic spectrum means the light, it can, it doesn't require any medium children. It doesn't require any medium to, to propagate from one medium to another medium. It doesn't require any medium. That's what light also can travel in vacuum also. Means any of the wave which doesn't require a medium to travel, those are, those are considered as electromagnetic waves. Of course, whenever this electromagnetic waves, I already explained you why the name has come as electromagnetic means electrons are moving by producing the electric field as well as the magnetic field. So, whenever it is propagating in the medium, it is going to give a spectrum of colors. That means number of colors it is going to produce. That is why it is going to be considered as electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, let us see how, will we, how it will be. This is what the electromagnetic wave children. This is the electromagnetic wave means now here is the wave propagation. This is the wave propagation in this direction. Suppose the wave is propagating in this direction. Suppose the wave is propagating then. 
now here it is moving in this direction okay in this direction one is another one is in this direction i already showed you this all the three perpendicular in motion right all the three perpendicular in direction this is what x axis y axis and z axis see this is x axis okay so that means this is straight of straight propagation children straight propagation so this is my x axis and this is my y axis and this is my z axis so in this way it is going to produce a electromagnetic wave means this is the wave propagation this black arrow shows us the wave propagation and then this green colored one shows us the electromagnetic field effect now coming to the blue colored line blue colored wave so this is our blue colored wave so the, of course this wave is producing like this and then this wave is producing like this okay and whenever these two waves are producing together it is going to be seen as in three dimensional in three dimensional this is a wave propagation this is the magnetic field and this is the electric field okay children now you i hope you understood now better about the electromagnetic wave how is it is how is it going to produce okay see this is actually the wave propagation see observe this observe the movement of the particles over here children observe the movement of the particles over here all the three moving in the same direction all the three moving in the perpendicular this is the wave like this line is there no this line is see here if you observe all the three are moving perpendicular to each other all the three are moving in perpendicular to each other observe it very carefully children now you can understand okay so in this way the wave is going to be produced so it is going to give us the wave propagation see the it is moving like this the one wave is moving like this another wave is moving like this so all the two the all the two that means here is a wave propagation and this electro electric field and as well as a magnetic field are going to be produced in this direction right children now you understood the uh, electromagnetic wave how is it going to be produced yes this is our wave propagation now in this electromagnetic spectrum let us see this electromagnetic spectrum this is having the various wavelengths and various frequencies children if you observe, see here children there is a black colored strip like structure but the all the electromagnetic spectrum is not as black color i just want to show you the visible spectrum so to look clearly about the visible spectrum here in this total region there is a small portion over here children there is a small portion over here this is only the part of visible spectrum means these are the colors only we can see here these are the colors it has been zoomed over here the these are the colors only we can see the rest of all the waves that means whatever the waves in the visible light can be seen to our naked eye the others the gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays infrared rays microwaves radio waves these cannot be seen at all these cannot be seen at all right children i hope you all understood very very clearly right super now coming over here see here there are some of the gamma rays and here x rays and here ultraviolet rays here infrared rays in between this is visible okay this is microwaves and here is a radio waves now these are or actually these all the rays will be used in our daily life children here the radio waves has been used for the radio and then here in between the radio waves to the microwaves they we are going to use those signals for the uh, for our televisions and fm radios and etc and these microwaves are also used for the mobile phones and uh, and all the things and in between the range of infrared to the microwaves we are going to use for microwaves and the sat for the satellite communication also and here we are going to get the infrared rays infrared rays are going to be produced from the heat lamps okay and then ultraviolet rays are going to be from the sun lamps or sun okay now here there is the range of x rays these will be used to detect that means what are the, what is there that are uh, to see the skeletal system of our body that means what is there inside our body we can't see right so through the x rays we are going to see of course but these are harmful 
uh, we will discuss the characteristics of all these rays in the uh, next ones. Now coming to the visible spectrum. Vis visible spectrum has been spread all over from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. It is from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. What is that nanometers I am saying? This is the wavelength of the light a wavelength of the visible light. The wave here, it starts with violet and it ends with red. That is what a VIVGR colors. What are the what are the colors? VIVGR colors. VIVGR colors in the sense it is rainbow colors children. So that is what are visible light. That means the combination of all these, the combination of all these can be seen very clearly. All the combination of all these can be seen very, very clearly over here. See here, violet, indigo, blue, if you observe, there is no such a boundary, boundary line, there is, no, there is no other boundary line. Of course, from here onwards to here, it is violet. We cannot mention from here onwards to here, it is violet. Here it is indigo, here it is blue, here it is green, and here it is yellow, and here it is orange. We cannot take such a boundary line, such a boundary line. It is exactly continuous by mixing of the colors. That's what it is also considered as a continuous spectrum afterwards. Uh, in the next uh, classes, we will learn about the emission spectrum, absorption spectrum, line spectrum, all the things we, we will learn. Okay, children, I hope you all understood very, very clearly, right? Am I so clear to you, children? Right? Okay, in the next class, we will discuss about the quantum theory. Okay, children, bye. Bye, everyone. Take care and try to revise all the concepts okay thank you bye